Love and respect everyone. This is Roxanne Greenwich. Today is uh, February 9th, 2011. I think it's Thursday? All right, I'm not sure. Okay, <laughs> okay it's February 9th, 2012. I believe it because my computer tells me so. February 9th, 2012. This is Roxanne Greenwich. I am 12-year demonstrator of a Wharton in 2001, Wharton Business School recognized invention of business method, which is nothing more than providing standard access using the powerful free collaborative abilities, learning abilities, shared learning, evidence gathering, depositions, and expert witness testimony abilities provided by the free and low cost internet technology to provide standard access regardless of who you know or what you have for a previously unseen, unmeasured, unaccommodated, and now we're finding out spanning every demographic, unlimited population of rural, a worldwide population of disadvantaged creators of original creative work product contributions that impact quality of life in America, worldwide, uh, U.S. economy uh, recovery, restoration. Uh, ch uh, court reform, government reform, individual accountability, judicial accountability in government, and uh, can measure, can develop those administrative solutions tools, acting lawfully uh, but aggressively to control a U.S. citizen's public docket database, wherein we actually create our own virtual all neighbors welcome community meeting place where we can network, strategize, share learning, share what work, honestly share our mistakes, but always, always announce peaceful, aggressive, law abiding solutions to uh, save the soul of our cities, the soul of our states, indeed the soul of our nation and to continue to ensure the preservation of our society and indeed our evolution as a species. We're gonna this is launching this this video is launching higher lyrics US citizens control public docket database as a solution for jobs creation, jobs expansion, 2012 recognizes law enforcement are working class people too. Again, restore courage to journalism. Restore courage to journalism when U.S. citizens control a public docket database for the sake of truth and public record. The reporting challenge recognizes law enforcement are working class people too. Again, <laughs> U.S. Citizens Control Public Docket Database is a higher lyrics administrative solution demonstrated in prototype working scale model of what should be and could be a globally practicing quality of life enhancing standard access mechanism for pro se litigants and American working class student and impoverished families, small business owners, sole proprietorships to be able to raise quality of life in our neighborhoods, community development, academia, environmental protection, weather control, engineering, bioengineering, information technology, medicine, science, healthcare, space travel, 12-step recovery, and uh, corrections, prison reform. Uh, look for the t what we are going to deal with in uh, this series. As gonna, this, of course, the video is going to be long, but I'm going to break it up in several segments. So this will be the lead uh, video, which basically just itemizes and gives you a table of contents of what is in this uh, law enforcement or working class people, too. Uh, uh, U.S. Citizens Control Public Docket Database uh, Video and Blog Journalist Series Evidence Reporting Module Series uh, as an administrative solutions tool for measuring individual accountability demonstrated by higher lyrics Roxanne Greenwich now having demonstrated and verified 
the claims of two, more than 2,000 and growing federal crime victims who are also a, um, once organized, would be a, um, an, an influential lobby group, voter constituency, having a voter and lobby group um, endorsement and impeachment clout and could actually sway elections to bring better quality of life ethical and accountable uh, judiciary and uh, elected officials um, and lawmakers into play. Okay, so uh, in, in, into position so that uh, uh, ethical lawmakers, uh, discretionary prosecutors, people having the authority, law enforcement, highest levels of law enforcement on the state level and the federal level can use ethically and in a qualified fashion having all the evidence available to them, not subjective evidence of a uh, any court-censored or personality-driven subjective censor or mutilated docket that was mutilated uh, discriminatorily either through deliberately imposed administrative court errors or um, just uncorrected administrative court errors, human error, uh, which resulted in malpractice, and because uh, the malpractice either falsified case records of the um, employee misconduct, the agency employee misconduct, Department of Human Services, CPS, ACS, OCS, employee misconduct, how it got to the false misrepresentations got to a state court judge who then committed malpractice and put them actually illegal orders, illegal for their own state statutes. Uh, to illegally transfer the custody of children and criminalize domestic relations matters. Okay, so we're looking at pro se filing opportunities, pro se claims form opportunities provided for us through the Department of Justice, U.S. Department of Justice, and the various official district court websites, and learning the rules, the local rules for the um, uh, state court website so that first year we can show that we're compliant well, by the time we're issuing a for, as a as a constituency as a group of similarly situated people of class having similarly situated claims our fraud reports whistleblower transmittals our intervention investigation and US government office US Department of Justice Office of Victims of Crime intervention and audit referrals are in fact jurisdictionally specific showing that showing those authorized interveners, the funding decision makers, maybe in the U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee, whoever has the authority to all uh, uh, discipline judges, nominate judges, revoke the nomination of judges, uh, so on, whoever, which is our presidential uh, candidate. And yes, we write letters to President Obama with our evidence modules and we write letters to Eric Holder who is our US Attorney General and we have been writing letters since 2001 on 9-11 to President George Bush at the time. You always should report your evidence to the presidential administration and that presidential administration's choice of law enforcement, <laughs> okay, of accountability. Not because we can make anybody wrestle them down and do the right thing, but for a U.S. citizen's control overview and evolution of rows, columns, and tables, inserting measure, inserting incident reports, inserting verified facts and data, inserting, inserting evidence, docket analysis, comparisons, you can measure individual accountability. You can measure individual accountability, not just for willful misconduct or negligence, but you can also use it as an intelligence gathering tool, which would, which would trigger flags for alignment of political agendas and fund, funding decision agendas. What do I mean by that? I mean that no way, if we talk about the free and low-cost services of the Internet technologies and the ability to collaborate, uh, give us an all neighbors welcome community meeting place. What we do in the virtual now, we can have transactions virtually, uh, meet and, and share information and data and transactions with people that we will never meet, but we're impacting them 
typical for what has happened. So what uh, we can do with our data, our data becomes due diligence, showing we did all our homework, we went through the checklist of compliances for each process, if it was the Department of Justice claims process for damages caused by a federal agency, if it was the Department of Justice uh, um, complaint form for, uh, against an immigration practitioner, which would which show that Randy Klug's risk in Florida, whistle, who's now in Lee County Jail, life at highest risk of inhumane, torturous conditions, and uh, Love Thomas Wright Cooper has been harmed by Big Springs, Texas employees. You can show how it's an evolution, the incident report, the accountability for what happened on any particular day was a an evolution of several official corruption fraud, civil rights crimes, actually felony crimes, conspiracy, defamation, um, um, aggravated assaults, kidnap, uh, torture, rape. You could show these happen. You get it happen. Who was responsible for causing that ball to roll and what the relationships were the conflict of interest relationships, who knew who and why an immigration attorney might have uh, put trumped up immigration charges on Randy Clues, maybe because it's, he did fifty le he did letters to fifty governors, acted lawfully, and circulated a petition online using the internet technologies to reveal, document, and be responsible and responsibly record why a corrupt D Florida DCF social worker Voight should be removed. So and once that form is filed with the uh, Department of Justice, the complaint form with the Department of Justice against the immigration practitioner, you can bet a dime to a donut that you're going to find out those immigration practitioners are in fact um, related somehow to the interest, the funding, the billing interest of the GCF agency and the corrupt social worker. So, and again, the same thing with my son, love Thomas Wright Cooper, how he... Um, the, how he exposed the um, real estate and tax lien fraud schemes in Park County participated in by 134 uh, corporate fictive employees who had set up a fund where they benefit by fraudulent billing of the citizens there in Montana and how a depraved judge, Jack D. Sandstrom, who is happens to be a federal judge, but is not beyond accountability. See, we're not, we're not, we recognize that criminals are 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 hiding behind a cloak of of rhetoric of uh, the rhetoric being immunity, you know, in a law. That's abuse of a congressional act. 1983 is a civil rights act, and that's abuse. So we recognize that. So we say, higher lyric says, document case by case, verify the claims case by case, count the jurisdiction, count how many times this person. Did this? Jack D. Sandstrom uh, uh, sentenced Love Thomas Wright Cooper outside of sentencing guidelines illegally and outside the recommendation, 27 months recommended by the U U.S. parole officer of 27.5 months, deliberately 80 months, jesting and, and, and jeering at him. That 80 months divided by 12 is 6.66 years. The mark of the beast. And Jack D. Sandstrom, this federal judge, was it locked up at the same time as Love Thomas Wright Cooper in Shelby for Love Thomas Wright Cooper to learn that Jack D. Sandstrom's son was sentenced to life for raping to death a woman with a broomstick. And Jack D. Sandstrom's daughter announced that she was going to do her best to kill herself with a methamphetamine overdose, which is very hard to do. you got to really work at that, right? And she succeeded in dying of methamphetamine overdose. So the depravity of this judge, Jack D. Sandstrom, is reflected in the demonic filings. And how do you gather in the demonic rulings, the, the, uh, the illegal rulings, that's malpractice. It's against the state law. It was against the uh, federal laws. It was against the sentencing laws. So now we got the litigant tied up into, which is already a financially devastated federal crime victim, created by official corruption, fraud, and civil rights, a bunch of gangland criminals that were officially positioned to do this, right? 
what what's getting defrauded? Our U.S. economy is getting defrauded. <laughs> That's what's getting defrauded. Our education and our efforts to reform our education and be competitive. And what our president, uh, uh, Barack Obama, talked about in his uh, speech, his State of the Union speech, uh, about how Americans have to become innovative. We have to uh, stop outsourcing everything. We have to stop bringing everything in. We have to be able to have the ways and means of education here to be competitive in a global market. So that's what's getting defrauded. <laughs> okay, our economy is getting defrauded when people print, when a group of criminals function in wolf pack fashion through conflict of interest of whatever their position description is uh, to uh, protect children or to act as uh, representatives in a court process, a bar association practitioners, when they go in conflict with their bar association co codes of conduct or their CPS funding rules, policies and procedures, what they were supposed to do, their checklist of requirements for uh, ruling out what is uh, uh, the reporter's um, motives of really assessing case reports and protecting the integrity of case reports as it moves through the process so that these domestic relationship judges that even want to do the right thing aren't getting spoon-fed, piecemeal, mutilated, destroyed evidence, lies in official court documents that cause protect their parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and true family heritage, health freedom, uh, demonstrated vested interest in the care of children, property, future and freedom, education, and U.S. economy careers contribution to just co com completely obliterate and penalize the patriotic law-abiding America. So this is going to be a series we're going to talk about uh, some laws. We're going to use every filing procedure coming up with this one in Minnesota uh, pro se filing procedure to introduce to the federal court some laws that if they got put on the book, thank, thank you, Rehab Amir in Michigan, the Amher Bill, she showed us how to write bills, write legislative language, you write down, wow, this would have been in place when this, this wouldn't have happened, and this loss wouldn't have occurred, and uh, we wouldn't have had to suffer this damage across the board, either in a county or a neighborhood or a generation. So get this law in place. So we're uh, Amher Bill preserves heritage in Michigan. And we're going to follow. We have a mayor in the Amherst Bill, and Governor Graham won't sign it into law. Uh, and we're going to use filing opportunities to our uh, pro se filing our federal lawsuit opportunities to suggest what new laws would work for federal judges if they made it a federal rule. You know, um, it's going to be to enforce the uh, Parent Parental Abduction Act upon first notice made by lawful state or federal court filing. Federal judge authorizes U.S. Marshals Federal Fugitive Task Force to assist in the retrieval, rescue, and expeditious return of children abducted by a family division litigant who takes advantage of family court not investing the funds to deploy overwhelmed local police and sheriff deputies and federal court's financial challenges for giving less weight to inform a parparis non-lawyer represented litigants as lawyer represented litigants, unquote. We have an order from that from Honorable Mitchell S. Goldberg, a federal judge that said the only reason he closed the case, not because he didn't know that they were lying twice to U.S. Marshals and Sandra Sullivan after a mob assault, Eric Brown and Sandra Sullivan of my grandchildren and their family beat us down in the street with baseball bats and guns at 29, 30, 45 minutes after we served them with a lawful rule to show cause in family court. They came and abducted the children in a public mob assault, beat us down in front of 51 people. So it's not that the judge was saying, I don't have the proof that that happened and they're not really fugitives. I'm just saying that we're not going to put the money in to go find them, the Federal Fugitive Task Force. We were more than happy to send the Federal Fugitive Task Force at Judge Robert J. Matthews request to come and get you when you were trying to protect your children from his child abusing on the take orders. But he's a judge. He's a state judge. He can ask for the help of the U.S. Department of Justice Task Force. So, of the U.S. Department of Justice. So, after having some conversations with Zane David Memminger's office, he's paralegal, and us, and getting clarification that and 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 Department of Justice Action Committee missing and exploited children, only 
the CPS agencies that are already the corrupt ones that caused all the mistakes are able to make these reports. So we would like to make it a law that if a, any pro se litigant or, federal, or someone who can show that they're a victim of federally inflicted crimes of official corruption, fraud, and right that has always acted lawfully and does show up in court and doesn't present evidence and has that evidence should be able to enlist the help of the U.S. Department of Justice. There should be some mechanism, some form that we can fill out and say we need to invoke the help of the U.S. Department of Justice, not just the courts, not just an officially positioned person. We are the American citizen that is impacted and we're holding the evidence of why we there's a, an act, in this case the Parental Abduction Act, a Congressional Act, that these people are in violation of and know, know our local jurisdiction law enforcement doesn't want to spend the money to go after them, they're getting away with them. No, this federal judge has made it clear that it's not worth spending the money to invoke the Federal Fugitive Task Force for this reason because you're non-attorney represented. Our courts are commercially driven. So we're saying could you please make it a law and when you make it a law that we make it give us some venue for asking for the help of the U.S. Department of Justice Federal Fugitive Task Force, go on and, and, and increase the salaries of whoever it is that has the burden of going and getting and rescuing these children, these abused children. If it's the U.S. Marshals, increase their salaries. If it's the federal judges, increase their salaries. If it's the magistrate that can bypass a jury trial and a long litigation process by making a federal rules compliant decision based on fair adjudication, qualified adjudication of the evidence, then by all means, raise those salaries. Give them salaries instead of giving billions of dollars to basketball players, to football players. I don't begrudge you any money, but come on, our, our society is demonstrated, is reflecting a, a perversion of what is important. We have perverted quality of life here in our economy. When we pay more money to people who uh, play ball than we do the, 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 um, that uh, fuel mainstream media sponsorship advertising, then we do our educators and our judiciary and uh, people to do the right thing. Okay? So um, that's one law. And another law would be forbid domestic relations judges from ordering the arrest, imprisonment, or otherwise criminalizing any party who is responsibly participating in state court family divisions, domestic relations, litigation, as either an attorney, represented, or pro se litigant. If any American demonstrates by submitting document, affidavit, deposition, expert witness reports, invoices, receipts, and proof of prior contractual investments made in demonstration of the American citizens' commitment to preservation of family heritage, health, education, or employee or self-employed small business or community development mentoring U.S. economy careers contributions. Uh, I'm going to say a parent or guard, grandparent or uncle or aunt or even a, a person, a foster parent who can prove that they vested interest in this child. Authentic vested interest. Not they lived with you for 12 months or at your same, that you shared an address. That you vested interest in this child's heritage freedom, health, careers contribution, education, well-being, okay? Anybody who can demonstrate that they have a greater vested interest than an inept or just on-the-spot agency employee, state worker, CPS, DHS worker, who just decided to write up a case report from the field, right? Anybody who can represent that interest should be able to declare they are protecting their child children from increased risk of abuse and injury by unaccountable CPS DHS agency foster placement in shelters and whereabouts unknown to parents while family division matters are adjudicated by the state judge and as long as the parents appear at scheduled hearings with a lawyer or having entered evidence of CPS DHS employees misconduct 
fraud, or malpractice in accordance with local rules and notices of scheduling hearing. I'm going to add for pro se that they apply with, come with that evidence. As long as they keep showing up, they should be it. Never, ever. That makes the state court domestic relations judge now accountable. That judiciary on the state court level that's functioning in the domestic relations matter now becomes accountable as to whether or not they scrutinize the integrity of due process in this matter. Did they really order discovery? Did they really uh, ask the petitioner if it was the agency, CPS or DHS or OCS, did they really ask them to show you evidence? You know? What are you doing? I mean, what, did you did you really, when the other side comes back, when the parents come back and say, wait a minute, I like you do in Alaska, Shanna Silock, the OCS, uh, uh, where Sarah Palin's legacy of domestic violence is protecting her family friend Michael Ponte uh, against criminal charges and, and penalizing the mother, right? Every time the judge uh, is asked, why, why didn't you, uh, why did you allow these two competently performed, expertly performed police forensics interviews of the children, which definitely proved that Michael Ponte caused two avoidable brain injuries to Shannon Silex's children uh, while uh, beating on the other children. Why are you suppressing that? He can get away with not answering that question because there's always an OPA lawyer, an agency lawyer acting in conflict of interest standing there because none of her pro se filings can get into court. They can get in, but they keep getting rejected because technically you have an attorney of record and the attorney of record acts in conflict of interest in the best interest of the OCS billing agenda, okay? And, of course, the nepotism corruption to cover up the Sarah Palin having appointed Judge Gregory P. Heath, which is her relative, Sarah Palin's uh, maiden name is he. <laughs> okay, so they're covering up Michael Ponte, who grew up playing with their kids, <laughs> right, playing in their house and everything, all uh, his domestic violence crimes and his criminal issues, they keep closing the case and covering up everything. So that would make the judicial, this law on the books would make the state domestic relations judge accountable for entering malpractice errors that cause harm, which is in alignment with President Barack Obama and Joe Biden's domestic violence awareness event of October 27th, where the Department of Justice, among other agencies, issue new tools and best practices to judges, to family court judges. Okay, three, a forbid federal and taxpayer funded CPS state functioning agencies, Department of Human Services, to attach the personal assets, earnings, or property of any American parent or grandparent or any uh, pro se litigant or attorney represented litigant in a family uh, domestic court relations matter who is responsibly participating by appearing at state court family division notices in writing or who has taken steps to file the appropriate federal lawful filings, lawsuit, civil rights lawsuit, and the Department of Justice claim for damages caused by a federally funded agency employee's misconduct, Form 95, Department of Justice, SX Form 95. So if somebody is in the process of trying to get their evidence fairly adjudicated, acting lawfully, as Americans do here, right? We're not to be called activists or rebellions. We are we are American. <laughs> We're citizens trying to invoke our rights, our state constitution, our federal constitutional rights, to petition our courts for redress of grievances. It's supposed to be our right. Okay, so <laughs> so uh, as long as we're doing that, don't let, uh, don't allow any allegation or trick mechanized billing, automatic billing, just because a CPS agency worker caused your child to be uh, having hospital care while placed in foster care just because the judge either overwhelmed, incompetent, negligent, conflict of interest or presidential, it really doesn't matter the reason why they're not looking at the evidence, right? Just don't allow it to trigger into automatic, mechanized, oppressive billing. Garnishy of wages to cause uh, further um, financial hardship to the already financially devastated federal crime victim created by official corruption, fraud, and civil rights. 
don't allow that to happen. Any of these fillings that the CPS and DA, we have in our docket database verified evidence. It's a standard modus operandi, the records mismanagement, that once you get something in a database, right, in, in the databases that we're measuring, that we're compiling, we're measuring all the mistakes, all the negligence, the unaccountability, it just replicates. That's one of the characteristics of the Internet and the digital age and the technology. It's replicates. So while we're using the replication features of the and the repetitive features to uh, take control over citizens' journalism and create our own media, by all means, you better believe that the traditionally evolved mechanized systems, the agencies, that billing comes in in, in forms of snatching up your tax return, and your refund, and uh, uh, liens, uh, property liens, and even though they're bogus, even though they're incorrect, garnish your way, it causes further destruction of the U.S. American working class student, impoverished American business owner, family member, head of household, and thereby destroys our economy. All right. And what else? Another law for Prosecur prosecutorial exemption for law abiding community development, always peaceful court, judicial accountability, court and government reform and activists. I think what I'm trying to say here is people, <clears throat> there's a word being thrown around, activists, right? Okay, some people call themselves activists. I say that we're law abiding, we're not activists. We just would like our law, our existing laws to be applied, please. And we would like to have fair voting in our existing laws. I want to refer you to Elliot Bernstein's suggestion of the People's Party. Go to his channel on YouTube. You can see his U.S. Senate hearings and you can see his presidential platform speech for how the Internet technologies, which he helped invent, okay, <laughs> actually the webcasting and all, actually provide us fair voting opportunities. We can have... The, the lay person, the person who's struggling from check to check to go to work, that's not sitting in on Senate hearings and legislative bills <laughs> proposed, can now actually know what legislation is available, right, to be voted on, what it means, what it says, and then vote and have their vote actually counted and mean something, okay? So I think that there should be, at the prosecutorial's discretion, qualified discretion, after having a venue for receiving all evidence on all side data as due diligence, right, presented, to be able to have the discretion that no one who is deemed an activist, a court reformist, a government reformist, again, in compliance with our president's uh, State of the Union address, where he said we must reform our government. It's out of control, people. Okay, it's no longer applicable. <laughs> we need it's a people eating machine. All right, so that would be a law, and of course, the language would have to be hammered out on that. All right, I'm going to stop right here with um, the announcement that Higher Lyrics, U.S. Citizens Control, Public Docket Database, me, Roxanne Greenwich, is offering free cash awards of $200 each to any family member of any inmate in Big Springs, Texas, who gives us information, the full names and the handles used, the aliases, the intimidating terroristic aliases used by certain Big Springs employees, Big Springs, Texas, Bureau of uh, Prisons, .gov, in Big Springs, Texas, notorious for being the worst prison in the world, notorious for people being lost, killed, dying in the hole, uh, and so on. So and retaliated against and just harassed and abused by a bunch of sadistic employees. So I I'll, I I will give in whatever way to fa I was going to suggest that we put it on the books of the inmate at Big Springs, but that could mean that they would get retaliation if. It's seen that Roxanne Greenwich is giving them money. There are um, currently in Big Springs, Texas, there are these locations 1900 Smiler Avenue, Big Springs, Texas, 
the staff is in 1900 Smiler Avenue, and so is the warehouse. But they have another special housing unit. They call it special housing unit. Uh, that's what we're going to ask the uh, general holder's announcement of uh, uh, Charles E. Samuels Jr. announced the appointment of Charles E. Samuels as the director of Federal Bureau of Prisons. We're going to ask him to please get search warrants and go in and see what's going on and uh, investigate uh, what's going on up, up in that Big Springs prison. People are really being hurt, tortured, and die. Uh, 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 first of all, they're being erroneously placed there. And their BOP points, their reasons for why they're there, and um, but they're being retaliated against by certain employees. One is a case manager, Miss Patton. And when you go online, you search these names, you see that their prisoners are filing in the appeals office the civil rights cases, and the civil rights court, the court of appeals, is actually allowing, indicating their aliases as Hannibal the Hun. And things, uh, 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 this is Huffman, Huffman Hannibal, the Hun, and all of these are just, uh, they're actually appearing, appearing like that in the docket. So you have, uh, anyway, three $200 cash award to the family members. Many, let's see. this is where they're located at. See, the weekly population report, this is the weekly population report for all the federal prisoners under the BOP facilities, the privately managed secure facilities, and CCM offices, and it is 216,879 on February 9th. Now, let's go down to Big Springs. We have a lot here in Pennsylvania. Many times people in one state have family in another state. So they're, they're, they, move, they move them all around. Like you saw what happened with Randy Krug. We're going to do another video on Randy Krug's mail package being returned and everything. So it's a way of obstructing an American's right to due process if they don't get their legal mail. They don't get the Randy Krug never found out that higher lyrics sent him. The Department of Justice Immigration Complaint Form of a for an Immigration Practitioner to show the conflict of interest in the whistleblower retaliation arrest because of his work exposing the corrupt DCF Florida social worker needing to be removed. Voice. Okay, so let's go down to for what I'm I am as um lo love Thomas Wright Cooper's mother <laughs> and the owner of Higher Lyrics and the U.S. Citizens Control Public Docket. I'm offering three $200 cash rewards for, you have to disclose your identity to me, you don't, I'll, I'll pay $500 if you do an affidavit, a witness affidavit. I want to know the names of those people, I want to know the incidents that are in there, that are going on in there, I want to know the torture, I want to know the being uh, stripped down naked and beat, I want to know the forced druggings. I want to know the terrorism, the coercion, the theft of money placed on the books. I want to know every, all the details, particularly the first and last name, and any testimony you have of dates that you can remember, or your family member can remember a witness. My son, Love Thomas Wright Cooper, had a, another freedom fighter that he had befriended in there that was helping him, and he was going to work on the iView at RICO documents for the theft of the iView at patents and the car bombing for Elliot Bernstein, who was a hired ex, was outsourcing it to him, while he was talking to me in email, giving me the proof of a case manager patent having a nervous breakdown because he insisted on learning why his BOP points placed him at highest risk for his life being in danger when he was supposed to be in a, quote, sneaky camp. All right, and they used a de facto traffic court non-appearance in Virginia 15 years ago for placing him in with sex offenders and murderers. Right, and he's a political prisoner, whistleblower, retaliated against for exposing the depravity of a federal judge, Jack D. Sandstrom, who was spearheading real estate and taxing fraud in Park County, Montana. Look at the document in Nevada District Court where Love Cooper uh, sues for nine billion. His defendants are one hundred and thirty-four. Corporal FICTA employees, including an illegally practicing conflict of interest, 
uh, U.S. Attorney Ryan Whitaker. Ryan Whitaker, who has other convictions that he was not authorized to even practice in that jurisdiction. Okay, guys. Uh, Long time. Oh, contact Roxanne Greenwich, www.hirelyrics.org. I am Higher Lyrics Administrative Services, U.S. Citizens Control, Public Docket Database, and you better believe it's a solution. Well, a solution for what? Engage, halt, slow, and eventually heal a nationwide child slaughter, U.S. economy fraud, court and education reform, state of emergency. God bless everyone. This is Roxanne Lynch.